Greetings. My name is Dr. Magoha, and today we'll be discussing brain death. A word of warning, we shall be discussing death and end-of-life care, a topic which might be sensitive to some viewers. Brain death is defined as the irreversible loss of all functions of the brain, including the brainstem. Or simply put, it's when a person on artificial life support no longer has any brain functions. An evaluation for brain death should be considered in patients who have suffered a massive, irreversible brain injury of identifiable cause. A patient is determined to be brain dead is legally and clinically dead. Three essential findings in brain death are coma, absence of brainstem reflexes, and apnea. This must be completed by a primary physician and a second confirming neurologist or neurosurgeon. It's important to note that classification of brain death is necessary if a patient is going to be an organ or tissue donor. Otherwise, discuss the grave prognosis with the family and the possibility of withdrawal of care or DNR. Always make sure you discuss advanced directives for the patient prior to doing a brain death exam as the patient might become cardiovascularly unstable due to the hypercarbia and may code. So what are the prerequisites of determination of brain death? Please note, all of these must be met. Number one, carry out relevant investigations to rule out all other causes of reversible coma. This may, may be uremia, diabetes, or hepatic encephalopathy. The patient must have no respiratory effort and no severe acid base, electrolyte, or endocrine abnormalities. The partial pressure of oxygen must be more than 90 for at least 30 minutes. The systolic blood pressure should be more than 100 millimeters of mercury for at least 30 minutes. They must have a negative serum and urine drug screen and if given barbiturates, you must have serum barbiturate levels. There must be no residual paralytics. The patient's temperature should also be above 35 degrees Celsius. Now we move on to the examination. We look for brain reflexes. These must be tested bilaterally. Look for fixed dilated pupils or mid-position pupils that are non-reactive. There must be an absent corneal reflex. Check the oculocephalic reflex, also known as the doll's eye maneuver. Please note this can only be done if the C-spine has been cleared. Then we do the oculovestibular reflex, also known as cold water calorics. Check for the presence or absence of a gag reflex or a cough reflex. Ensure the patient has no paraspinal motor responses or even a grimace due to deep pain tested in all extremities. Note that this does not include Babinski reflex or withdrawal reflex. Now we move on to the apnea test. Pre-oxygenate the patient at 100% oxygen for 10 minutes until you have a partial pressure of oxygen of more than 200 millimeters of mercury. Normalize the partial pressure of carbon dioxide to 30 to 45 millimeters on ventilator. Get a baseline blood gas analysis after 10 to 20 minutes. Then disconnect the ventilator and press the oxygen at six liters per minute through nasal cannula in the end of an endotracheal tube or T-piece, if that's what the patient is using. Then observe for respiratory effort, get serial uh, blood gas analysis until the PCO2 is more than 60 millimeters of mercury. PCO2 rises at three millimeters of mercury per minute or at 10 minutes. So typically draw at five, eight, and 10 minutes. Then, reconnect the respirator when complete. 
stop the test if you have dysrhythmia or severe hypotension. What do we do if the patient cannot perform an apnea test or other patient factors prohibit the exam? We can order the following. Number one, an EEG looking for any brain activity. Number two, a perfusion study. These are numerous, I shall mention a few. You can do a conventional DSA, a CT angiogram, a magnetic resonance angiogram, or radionuclide angiography. Brain death is confirmed by demonstrating the absence of intracerebral feeling at the level of the carotid bifurcation or the circle of Willis. The external carotid circulation is present and the filling of the superior sagittal sinus must be delayed. If available, you can also do transcranial dopplers. Since as many as 10% of patients might not have temporal isonation windows due to skull thickness, the initial absence of Doppler signals cannot be inter interpreted as consistent with brain death. All the phases of determination of brain death should be clearly documented in the medical records. And as such, the medical records must indicate the etiology and irreversibility of the coma shown by unresponsiveness of the patient, the absence of motor response to pain, the absence of brainstem reflexes during two separate examinations separated by at least six hours, the absence of respiration with a pCO2 of more than 60 mm per Hg, and the justification for the test, the result of the test, and any other confirmatory tests used. Withdrawal of cardiorespiratory support should be in accordance with the laws of your country and your hospital's policies, including those of organ donation. Thank you for your attention and have a blessed day.